I'm so excited because Nick Malgeri is here to teach us the secret to pulling dough to create one of Austria's most iconic desserts, apple strudel, which is one of my favorite desserts. I'm glad. I, I love, love it, it too. And Everybody I, loves apple strudel. And I think you are one of the masters Thank you. of pulling strudel dough. And I've been doing it for a long time. Okay. And so we're going to start with the dough. Yes. One and a half cups of unbleached bread flour. But real or 200 grams. Into the flour, you want half teaspoon of fine sea salt. Fine. Good, and if you stir that in, I'm gonna get the liquid ingredients ready, which are one large egg. So that's just gonna go into a measuring cup, and you'll see why in a second. Tablespoon of neutral vegetable oil. I like to use a nice organic cold pressed safflower oil. That's good. Because it has a really mild flavor. And now we want to add warm water so that you get just to about two thirds of a cup. And then whisk that together a little bit. That's enough. And then that goes right in. And first what we want to do is stir that all together. And then we can put it on the mixer and let the dough hook do the work of kneading it. We can put it on the mixer. Second speed is good. There we go. That's perfect. Okay. So that takes a while. I'm just going to put a drop of oil in the bowl, the equivalent of about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'd love to show the alternative method to mixing it by machine, which is pounding the dough against well, the table. Well, that would be great. I so let's to take see that. that dough out of the mixer. And I'll show that very quickly. And then we can move to our dough that's already made. So if you don't have a mixer, you do what we did initially, which is to stir everything together. Little bit of flour on the work surface. And then it's a, it's a whack and fold and turn. See, I'm pressing it down, I'm folding it, and then I'm grabbing it from the side. And you do that approximately 100 times, you have which good hands sounds for this. like, yeah, and a little experience. <laughs> and that's enough. When it's ready, into the bowl, press it down so that the oil gets on top, and then cover it. Good. Just leave it at room temperature for how long? at least an hour or two, even overnight. Okay. Next, we're going to make the filling. I like to make a cooked apple filling. This is a golden delicious apple. It has kind of a hard texture. Right. So for the filling, a little bit of water goes into a pan, and this kind of enameled iron casserole is exactly what I like to use. Okay. The apples go in, and we've got, I think, half a cup of sugar. Oh, I'll right, give Martha? you that, yeah. And that can go right on top. A half a cup of raisins. Right, and Go the raisins go in golden, right away. Golden raisins. Either, Doesn't or matter. currants even. Oh, yeah. And a little bit of cinnamon. Now, my recipe calls for half a teaspoon. I always like to put more. I like cinnamon with the apples. These need to start to cook until you can hear them sizzle. Once they're sizzling, I cover them. I lower the heat, and I wait about 10 minutes. At the point where you take off the cover and you see the apples swimming in water, Leave the cover off, lower the heat, and then just let it reduce to the point where there isn't any more liquid left in the pan. And you just have the apples. And the whole thing takes about 20, 25 minutes. It really does evaporate. And the color is great. Good. Walnuts? Right in. Three quarters of a cup of chopped walnuts. Right. They should be coarsely chopped. And then tilt the pan. Oh. And you know, as long as that cools down, to room temperature, we're gonna be fine. It doesn't need to be ice cold. So that's the apple filling. As soon as it's cool to the touch, we can stretch the dough. Excellent. There's an old wives tale that a man will not marry a woman if he cannot read his newspaper through her stretched strudel dough. Interesting. Yes, so I will not marry you, Nick, unless your strudel <laughs> dough is thin enough. Our Here, this is ingenious. Uh, one of your prop people so two, two flour sacks together. Good. So what I'm going to do is put oh. an abundant amount of flour on here. Okay, so that's the rested dough. So I always like to pat it out into a pancake. Doesn't matter if the cloth is moving a little bit. 
first of all, a little flour on top. And then I like to roll out the dough as thinly as I can roll it. Once that's rolled out, a little oil on the surface of the dough. Now what this does is it prevents the surface of the dough from drying out while you're stretching it. Okay, this is the way to stretch the dough. Fists underneath it. So we start in the and center. And cut your nails, ladies. Yes. No dagger nails, right? Right. So you start in the center, and where the dough stretches and becomes thinner, it becomes lighter in color. Now, what if so, it gets a hole? Heaven forbid. If it gets a hole, your job is to not tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> How beautiful. Okay, now what I like to do, we can both pull sideways. This is fabulous. Yeah, and what I like to do here is anchor the dough over the edges. Little hole there. Little hole there. But you see, you didn't, you violated the pact, Martha. You're not supposed to say anything. If there's a hole, then nobody knows. True. Okay. Looks now, where's good. that newspaper? Well, I'll use my script. If I can read this, we can get married. Let's okay. see. Okay. I can read. Let's facts. see. Facts. Strudel in Austria. Oh, my it gosh. Called Awful strudel. Well, that, those Austrian and, men. And listen, you don't have to buy me a, a ring. I'll just take <laughs> one of those earrings, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> Next, we're going to do our butter. Okay. It's a question of just drizzling it on. You don't want a ton of butter on there. So first thing is... Breadcrumbs. Our buttered breadcrumbs. These are some breadcrumbs cooked in butter. So now we're going to take the filling. And put it where? Right on top of the breadcrumbs. Now there's a touch of cinnamon in here. I think before when we were making the filling, it, I it said, smells I amazing. often. This is a pretty fat strudel. Uh, yeah. This mesh, all of it? Oh, yeah, all of it can go in. Sure. See, I like that because I don't like it when it's skimpy. Yeah. Good. So, rolling is like this. We're covering the dough. I'm just folding the sides in like a little bit. Lift the paper and just let it roll. And there. there we go. Okay, that just needs to be folded under. Do not be afraid of lifting it onto the pan. Okay, and I'm not afraid. Good, that looks nice. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more butter on the outside. And this is probably the most important thing about forming the strudel is docking the top deeply with some openings. Because when mm, you do that, great. The steam is not going to accumulate on the inside of the strudel. I forgot to ask you what temperature oven. 400, and if you have convection, so much the better. It'll bake faster. About how long? It takes about half an hour, a little That's bit all. longer. I usually like to judge by the color. Fantastic. So into the oven, 400 degrees. Right. Here it is. It's been out of the oven for about how long? About half an hour. It's okay. cool enough to touch. touch. And... I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit of confectioner's sugar on it. It makes the flakiness stand out a little bit. Like make a couple of nice diagonal cuts. I don't like the end. I don't either. We're gonna have to find somebody to eat it. Okay. And. Wow, is that beautiful. And for you. Mitch Schlag. Mitch Schlag. With whipped cream, Mitch as they Schlag. say in Vienna. I'm gonna mm. have some too. Look at that. It is the perfect, perfect strudel. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Martha. Okay, but I do have to taste it. Yeah, because me too. Because without tasting it, how would I really know? Mm. A masterpiece. Thank you. Would you like to make really amazing pizza at home? Well, today we have a guest, Chef Christian Petroni. He's here to share his secrets for making authentic Italian style pizza in your very own oven. Let's do so, it. okay, so every secret you're gonna give us? Everything, I got nothing to hide anymore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think of pizza, I think of dough first. Yeah, you know, what I like to tell people is that you gotta almost envision a pizza as bread with seasoning. It's not always about the toppings, and the toppings are fun, and you can do great things with it. But you have to have that good base, yeah. right? If you don't have the good dough, then you might as well go make uh, tacos or something. Okay. You know? <laughs> Three and a half cups of spring water. Yeah, we like to bring it up to about 95 degrees. Okay, so three and a half cups of warm water. Yeah. And that minuscule amount of yeast, 
eighth of an ounce of fresh the yeast. The tiniest bit, because we're doing a slow rise, so okay. it'll all come together. Okay. And salt, salt too? The salt, we're actually going to wait a little oh, bit. We okay. like to get the water and the yeast and the flour. You can actually add all together. Oh, we don't bloom out okay. yeast. We just go for it. About two pounds, eight ounces, eight and a quarter cups, however you want to break it down. Yeah, so this is a really easy way to do it. All of our um, you know, pizza ovens in our restaurants all have these beautiful domes because we are creating a convection. You know, that's and how you get those the cheese and get so smooth. Oh my gosh. Oh, you want to let it go about one more minute and then you can add, go ahead and add your salt and we'll okay. let it go for about six more minutes after that. Okay. So now, what kind of flour is this? It's a doppio zero. It's a uh, PZ3. Oh, see, Zamanana. I like double zero flour. I use it's it for everything. pasta, too. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, it's more finely ground than your typical APs or cake flours. Okay, so just yeah. leave it? Let that rock for like six okay. more minutes. It's building up the gluten. Okay. So, so we take this beautiful dough, we put it in the bowl, we cover it with a damp cloth, and then we put it in the refrigerator and we come for see it tomorrow. It. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, right into the refrigerator. It's been in the refrigerator for a day. Yes. We go, we punch it down, and we okay. break up that first kind of batch of gas because what we're gonna okay. do now is take this out, and then that's when we roll our dough balls, and then we'll let it go another day. Oh, another day? Oh, yeah. Get a little bench flour going here. So, you know, we're making it at home. At the restaurant, we use a scale, we get an exact amount, but what we're really trying to get out of this thing is about eight portions out of this recipe. So, so let's see if my eyeballs have okay. done us any justice. And you want to fold from under. And then you get this nice, beautiful, velvety mm, piece of dough. Nice. Ugh. Doesn't that just make my you happy? <laughs> Each to his own. Right? Four on a sheet? Yeah, let's do four per. These nonstick mats really work great. So then we cover it again okay. with a damp cloth. And then one more night in the refrigerator. Okay. So make sure your oven is turned to the highest temperature possible. So that's 500. Yeah, some about. ovens 500, 550 for other yeah. people, depending on your oven. And make sure you place your pizza stone on the upper third of the oven. Yeah, you want to get it screaming hot because we're okay. going to mimic kind of a hot Neapolitan style oven. So here's our dough. Yes. She's beautiful. She looks like she's just ready to be turned into a delicious. Dough is she. Oh, of course. Okay. So what I like to do is take our semolina. Yeah. And just kind of throw it over our board. Okay, now. All right, so there's nothing more mortifying than getting your pizza on the peel and going to put it in the oven and then it sticks. Oh, and it won't come So that's why now. you just take the extra time, put the semolina on, okay. and then with our bench scraper. Oh, this is nice and soft. Okay. And we get this going. So we start with the semolina, then we give it a nice healthy dusting of flour over the top. Okay. So when I'm stretching it, I actually yeah. stay away from the crust because I like that beautiful bubbly crust around the edges. So I work from the middle, and then when you got a beautiful, nice soft dough, you're kind of letting gravity do the work. Everyone's got their own techniques. You give it a little throw. You know, the throwing is not just showmanship, it's actually doing some work. It's helping stretch that pie out. And then you notice the little bubbles that we still kind of have hanging out in here. Mm, yes. You want to take care not to break those. That would be beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you a trained pizzaiolo? I am. I figured. We have a couple different pizzas we're going to make today. We're going to make the queen of all pizzas, the margarita. The first thing in the margarita is our delicious tomato sauce. So, okay. It's just very simply milled tomatoes with sea salt. And mm -hmm. I like to start in the middle. Usually about you know two to three tablespoons, but we're eyeballing it. We're cooking at home, and you give it a spread. So, fresh mozzarella, you tear little chunks, and you kind of just want to spread it out. So maybe five nice little chunks, and then because we're making the Italian flag here, so we got the white for the mozzarella, we got the red in the sauce, and then a little balsamico, some oh fresh basil. Oh my gosh, look how pretty! Right off the plant. That is just beautiful. <laughs> Makes me happy. Well, I'm mm. easy to please, I guess. Next up the undisputed king of all cheeses, a little Parmigiano-Reggiano over the top, just a, a light dusting. Then we have one more little step mm. before we throw it this in the oven. This looks so good. Right, you can just almost go at it just like this. Yes, okay, what's the next step? It's a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to go on before okay. you throw it in the oven. Yeah, just the tiniest bit, you don't need a lot at all. Perfect. Now we're gonna go over to the ovens that we have blasting. Mm -hmm. We're gonna switch them over to broiler and it's gonna mimic. Right away? Oh yeah, once we oh, put them in, we're gonna okay. switch them right over to broil, and it's gonna mimic that Neapolitan oven. Okay, mine's over here. All right, I'm right behind you. Oh good, the pizza stone is right there. Okay. And we're making pizzas. So this next pizza we're gonna make, is called the tenderoni. We're gonna lay out our spicy sopressatas. I tasted that, it's so good. It gives you that bacon feel. You know, mm -hmm. when you get the crispy edges on the sopressata. Then we do a little bit of spicy chili oil over the top. We finish with a little more 
Parmesan. Mm, Does that get caramelized and crispy? So this is our tender row. So that looks great. This, this will go right in the oven, then we'll finish it, believe it or not, with a little bit of spicy Calabrian chili honey. And that's mm. what makes this pizza very non-traditional. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah fantastic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does that look like a pizza or what? Looks like it came right out of a wood oven. Oh my gosh, it looks so, so good. Awesome. So just put it on a yeah, traditional. Right, on, right onto a pizza tray. So do you cut it when it's this hot? Yeah, so a little trick that we also learned is we like to give a little kind of boost to okay. the pie and get that first blast of steam out from under. Because, so it doesn't get wet. Yeah, because that's going to give you your first kind of hit of soggy. You hear that? Oh my. Crispy. Ah. <laughs> Just as if it did Look come out of. Like, yeah, it just makes me so happy. Ah, gorgeous. OK. okay. That's All how right. we serve Now, wouldn't you be happy serving that to your friends, just like you'd find in Italy, in the very best wood-fired oven pizzeria? Ah, oh, chin down. Bubbled and slightly charred. Christian, thank you so much. This is spectacular. Don't be scared. Make pizza at home. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Cheers. Really good. Cheers. All right. Chin, chin. Mm. I think we're onto something. Mm-hmm. Have you ever pulled a pretzel? Well, Lena Kolchinski is here to show us the technique behind making soft pretzels, just like the kind you might find in a German beer hall. Thank yeah. you for having us. Up. And uh, first thing to do is proof the yeast. Yes. So two cups of warm water and two tablespoons of yeast. Yes. This is what it looks like when it proofs. So it does get bubbly and you know it's alive. Yes, you want it to be in a warm yes. place to rise. So we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients first. Six and a half cups of bread flour. Dark brown sugar, half a cup. Mix it in as soon as possible. It tends to dry up and turn into little rocks. <laughs> and four tablespoons of salt. Yes. All right. The next step we like to do is to add the fat. So a half a cup of butter. Half a cup. One stick cut into little... Little chunks. So we have all the dries in. And now if you want to just add the liquid, you can add them all at once. At this stage, we Thank just you. want to use the scraper and a spatula just to mix everything in. Are you going to need right here on the counter? Yeah, so what you're doing now, you're bringing it all together. You're making sure that all the wet ingredients are absorbed. Add some bench flour. And you empty it all on your counter. And at this point, just bring it together. The only motion that you need to learn is putting your hand under, over, and pushing, and pushing. away with the heel. You want it to be smooth eventually and We always dense. say it like a baby's bottom. <laughs> OK. And if you get tired, you can step away for a few minutes, let it rest. That's actually good for the dough. Exactly, yeah. Now, is this going to rise? Yes. So we rise it for eight hours overnight. So we need to make a poaching liquid for the pretzels. Half a cup of baking soda. Right. Uh, so that's alkaline. It's an alkaline. OK. And then so that's you... what gives pretzels that pretzel umami uh -huh. flavor, that very distinctive pretzel taste. Right. And eight cups of water, Oof. a quarter of a cup of dark brown sugar. OK. And now the secret ingredient is the ale, half a cup of pale ale. You want to use less hoppy beer? OK. So bring that to a simmer. Bring it to a simmer, and now we can move on to forming the pretzels themselves. OK, so. So this dough that we mixed, we fermented it at low temperature. It's easier to work with it if it warms up a little. It's so easier. not icy cold. Not icy cold. It's sort of this balance. It's easier to roll them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shape this into 14 by 12 piece. I'm going to start off by just kind of shaping it into a rectangle and then finishing off with a rolling pin. I'm going to cut it in half and give you half to shape. Oh, good. The baking sheets have to be sprayed with uh, with uh, Right, because they get non -stick. really sticky after you dip them in that hot okay. poaching liquid. So I get half? You are going to get a half, which you will try and cut in six pieces. Lengthwise? Lengthwise. OK. So this is one trick we figured out. Most of the German recipes start with a ball of dough that they stretch into a long string. And we found out that the surface of the pretzel ends up being very rough. Oh, you and, know? You, yeah, and you want smooth. And we want a smooth, glossy one, yes. So we realized that we actually want to start with a long piece and then stretch it just a little so you don't overwork the dough as you are rolling okay. it out. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So we want to stretch it into roughly 22 inch okay. uh, roll. So you want to start in the center. You want to keep the center thicker and then the ends thinner. So you sort of press your fingers in and away. Make your ends thin. So you get that little crispy end. So the fast method is just a twist in the air. I'll do another one. Cross over once, cross over twice. And then you hold them oh, up in the I air see. and then 10 o'clock. And two o'clock. Oh, yes, okay. And you pinch them in. Teeny look, tiny that ones. looks that very looks great. professional. <laughs> that, it does look good. <laughs> All right. So maybe we should make a few of those. Okay. And then we're ready to boil them. Okay. So <laughs> our liquid is simmering here. So we are going to put them on a spider, lower them in. How long do they stay in here? About 30 seconds. What okay. you want to do is, oh, yes, look. you want to have the surface cooked and slightly proved by the heat. That's all. This, oh, it's floating. Yeah, that proves them. So as soon as they float, you can remove them. Aha. Uh -huh. And then try sliding them, sliding it up. It's a little bit of an, a trick. There. So, yep, there you go. And you okay. can just adjust them on the sheet pan when they come burn out. you. <gasps> they great. look so good. And how far apart do they have to be? They don't grow much. So they can be pretty close. If you give them roughly an inch of a space around, that's pretty. They come out of your poaching liquid. Okay. And this is when you, when you want to put the toppings on, the cheeses and the seeds. Which one would you like? I like Fluffy. salt and poppy seeds. Okay. So how much salt? Just all over? Well, we put it only on the thick part. Okay. And make sort of a salt smile. So you have a salty part and you have a plain part. Okay. So gorgeous. Oh, I love the poppy seeds on them. I want to put some gruyere. See, I'm very Polish. Yeah. I'm not so German. Cheddar. I've never tasted a cheddar. You know what we pretzel. do? We do. We put the cheddar on, and then we sprinkle it with the very coarse pepper. The black pepper brings out that cheddar flavor after mm. baking really well. This is so great. Maybe some sunflower seeds. So oh, yeah, sunflower seeds. So we get these into an oven, 450 degrees, bake for five minutes, rotate, and bake five minutes more five to until chestnut brown. So let's get some of these in. Let's get those in and see what they look like. Look, Lena, look, Beautiful. look, those are made right here. <laughs> it's very exciting, actually. So you get these right off? If you did a good job spraying them, then yeah, there okay. shouldn't be any so issues. This, one, this one's a little. You <gasps> definitely want to give it a few minutes before you eat, like with everything. Yeah, how beautiful. Butter and mustard for dipping. Yeah, oh, butter see? is a classic thing they would do in Who's... Germany. Yeah, but here, the dip is the name of the game. Well, these pretzels really are as much fun to make as they are to eat. Thank you, Lena, so much. Thank and you, uh, I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes, but not until you make some pretzels. <laughs> Stretch one pound of pizza dough into a 13-inch round on a pizza peel topped with parchment paper. Spread one third of a cup of ricotta cheese, leaving a half inch border. Top with your favorite cheeses. I like Fontina and torn fresh mozzarella. Drizzle with olive oil and season with crushed red pepper flakes, salt, and pepper. Bake on a pizza stone in a 500 degree oven, seven to eight minutes. Top with fresh basil and serve.